What is biomimicry? Biomimicry is the setting of ideas from nature of the way we make or do things. Biomimicry, when well done, is just not imitation, it is inspiration. One example of biomimicry is Velcro. The most famous, uh, the most famous example of biomimicry is uh, Velcro brand fasteners, invented in 1941 by Swiss engineer George de Mestrel, who got, took the idea from uh, from burrs that stuck to tenaciously to a dog hair. Now we might take for granted uh, for Velcro, for for example, like uh, uh, wrapping PC cords. So I'm going to show you an example of how how you can wrap that. I mean, it's not a most perfect example, but you get the idea of how uh, you can wrap your... It's easier now to wrap your uh, cord. We went to the Hiller Air and Space Museum, located in San Carlos, California, to take a look at a full-size replica of the Wright Brothers plane. As you know, the Wright Brothers airplane was the first plane to ever take flight. We met up with a tour guide, Matthew Mintz, who gave us more info about the plane. The wings are curved. We call, we call that the, the, the camber. And the question is, why are the wings curved? Well, it happens that one of the Wright brothers' predecessors was one John Montgomery, who was a professor of engineering at the University of Santa Clara in the early 1900s. He developed, he developed gliders, and he was, and in order to develop a glider, he studied birds, and he was the first uh, person to truly understand aerodynamics. The Wright brothers tapped into his discovery and, there, and therefore incorpor, incorporated uh, the curvature that you see <laughs> is, is in, into the, the wings of uh, the right flyer. And of course... Uh, the airlines, military, and postal services today use this invention to transport people, goods, and use as a mode of defense. Our curiosity didn't stop there, so we took a road trip to Santa Rosa, California to meet up with Rob Liddy to talk more about biomimicry. I've been taking coursework from the Biomimicry Institute. Uh, one day I was on an airplane and um, saw an article written, um, uh, written by Dana from the Biomimicry Guild. And, uh, like, hey, there's a name for what I've been kind of trying to figure out how to do with my head. Sure is, um, it's really vast. It's it's amazing how much is out there. I mean, um, you know, nature's been out there doing its own version of research and development for a long time, and um, the things that it comes up with is, is incredible. And uh, and so. Me, uh, mating the two together, uh, possibilities are close to close to infinite. I have to say, um, you know, I, I have no idea where it's going to take me, but it's, it's definitely going to be uh, interesting, and it will also keep me interested. I have no doubt about that. With naturalists, you you learn to just sit and observe um, and so just watching nature you see things that are it's like wow that's that just that just blew me away didn't even know that that was possible or that this organism you know was did that sort of thing and why does it do it and I started asking questions and um, and it <laughs> Yeah, it leads you down a rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's a lot. Um, uh, it's kind of funny. A lot of the companies that are using biomimicry. I don't 
I don't know if it's um, because they don't want the competition to know about it, but they they haven't leaked out that they've used biomimicry in, in their products. And so there's a lot of stuff that um, can't be talked about, but uh, some cool stuff. There's um, you know, paints on the market that use lotus leaf technology. Uh, so they're, they're self-cleaning, and lotus leaf sits in the middle of this mud bog. It's a beautiful big white flower that stays white. How does it stay white? People figured it out, uh, adapted it to paint, so now you can paint your house, and whenever it rains, the house will self clean. Um, there's, a, there's a group in, from the uh, University of Norway uh, that have been working on uh, uh, cricket ears, or, yeah, cricket ears, uh, and they hear using hairs just like we do, but their, their hairs are on the backs of their legs. Uh, but um, they can, they're so sensitive that they can hear a cricket jump, uh, sorry, a spider jump. So they know if a spider is sailing through the air to come land on them. Um, and, and something that's really cool about uh, bugs and insects in general is that um, the mechanisms that they use are typically pretty s uh, simple, uh, yet highly sensitive. So, uh, so they're easier for humans to be able to, to mimic um, using uh, MEMS or um, mechanical, uh, micro electro, electro mechanical systems. Um, and they, uh, they were able to mimic the hairs on the grasshopper. So, so they can make these little tiny chips that are really low power that at some point in time they want to be able to implant it in people's ears. So people that have never been able to hear before will be able to hear. Something that a, that a lot of people know about, but they, they didn't really associate with biomimicry, is uh, the swimsuits that were um, that are being made by Reebok, uh, uh, sorry, Speedo, that, uh, that use sharks, uh, the technology of shark skin uh, in, in their in their suits, their swimsuits, and they were uh, banned from from competition, including the Olympics, uh, because people were uh, the, the times were dropping. There's, I think, there's only four uh, four records left uh, in the Olympics that haven't been broken by by the technology of a swimsuit. And yet, you know, they they studied they studied sharks, uh, but they also studied the human body and, and how um, the tendons in the human body work, and, and how um, they, they uh, it's pretty cool. They align the seams in the sweatsuits with the motion of the body, so they actually acted like tendons or springs. Um, so return motions took less energy. Uh, so there was a lot of stuff they incorporated into those, into those Speedo swimsuits. Uh, still are, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, hands off to them, they did really good work with that. So, so one, of the, one of the things that you tend to do with biomimicry is um, you, you have a problem, and then you look to, to nature for the solution. And you don't look in one spot. Um, if you find organisms from different climates all over the world that are using the same mechanism, um, especially if you see different types of organisms, like if you see the same mechanism in a plant as you do in, um, in a reptile or a mammal, then you know that's really a deep principle that um, has a lot of value. So you, you spend time looking for for those, those deep principles, and um, and then you evaluate the pros and cons of the different ones and, and see which one's going to work best for your product process or whatever. I don't, I don't see any, I don't see any uh, here today, but um, there are kingfishers that fly through here, um, do their uh, their food searching and hunting, um, and there was a there was a fellow that uh, modeled the kingfisher head. They're, they're really good. They, 
um, dive down in the water with almost no splash. Um, <clears throat> so, so somebody studied the, the head of a kingfisher, and uh, they developed um, a train, which I believe is running in Japan, that in the nose of the train models the, the shape of a kingfisher head um, for for to lower wind resistance and drag. And uh, it's a, it's, I believe it's the fastest train in the world right now. It's a really high-speed train, um, definitely over 200 miles an hour. This is um, this is a little bit different than my engineering background, but um, school project we uh, we were on on developing a business model uh, that uh, mimics sustainable ecosystems and. Um, our, our marketing person um, came up with with a marketing plan that that mimics um, weed seeds. Uh, so it's you know the way you you, you blow them and they they go everywhere, land everywhere. Um, and I thought that was really um, pretty ingenious to, to come up with that. That was that was pretty cool. But this was for this was for a model right here for that. In our closing remarks, we hope you've enjoyed the video, and we hope this has inspired you to do research and create inventions to better this world. Uh, 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 to uh, be talking about some fascinating things. So, whenever you get ready, Tyler. You want to make this one? Yeah, sure. So, you, kind of like you're talking to him. <laughs> what are you doing like? <sighs> I'm tired. Yeah. yeah, we're eating healthy right after the interview, huh? Yeah. I'm so fat ass. <laughs> I don't know about doing this tomorrow. I'll get one next time. You're recording now. What is biomimicry? Biomimicry is... <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Two, one. What is biomimicry? Biomimicry is the setting of ideas. I fucking fucked up already. <laughs>